Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. Today we're going to be talking about Ghostbusters on the Sega Genesis, which was developed and published by Sega in 1990. Ghostbusters on the Sega Genesis has the rare distinction of being really one of the only good Ghostbusters games to ever be released, aside from the newer gen versions on the Xbox 360 and PS3, and the exclusion of the PAL version of Ghostbusters 2 on the NES. This version of the game is more of a straight-up action kind of platformer, where the player then goes through each level, fighting a couple mini-bosses and then the big boss at the end. Once you start the game, the player is then given the choice between three of the four Ghostbusters. I'm not quite sure why Winston is missing from the game, but each of the other three have their own strengths and weaknesses. The bosses and the mini-bosses in the game are really cool and all have their own unique style. Each one is challenging in their own way and will force you to adapt to learning their patterns in order to beat them with the least amount of resistance. The game can be moderately difficult, and you'll have to be prepared to take some cheap hits on occasion. The game itself isn't that hard, it's just that it doesn't hold your hand in the slightest. You'll need to keep checking your map and head to all the places you haven't visited yet, or you'll end up walking around the stage in circles with no idea of where to go next. As I had said before, Ghostbusters on the Genesis was released in 1990, which was a few years after most of the other console ports, and rightfully so. It's an entirely different kind of game, and it's a much better kind of game. Another thing that separates the Genesis version from the rest is its inclusion of a totally new and original storyline, unlike the other games that were based off of the movie. In this one, the Ghostbusters are looking for several pieces of an ancient stone tablet that has something to do with all of the recent paranormal activity. There's even a twist near the end of the game once you complete the initial four missions where you have to rescue the other guys. The player is allowed to take on the missions in any order they choose, but it's usually best just to do them in the default order. They get progressively harder over time, and some levels require you to fight several mini-bosses before being able to take on the big ghost at the end of the level. In between each mission, the player is given the choice to go ahead and start the next one, or do some shopping for weapon upgrades and items. This becomes really important later on in the game, being that there are some levels that require certain items or certain weapons to get through them easily. Make sure to buy the three-way shot from the weapon store whenever you get the chance. It makes hitting a lot of the ghosts much easier, but will run out over time as your energy decreases. The control scheme on the Genesis version of Ghostbusters is pretty easy to deal with. A is used to throw your special item, which is usually your bomb. B is used to shoot, and then C, of course, is used to jump. After taking out one of the mid-level bosses, you'll get the opportunity to wrangle and trap the ghost for extra cash. As the ghost flies around, you'll want to hit and hold the shoot button to drag him down into the trap. Be careful though, since you really only get about two attempts before the ghost ends up flying away. Just be patient and wait for him to get into a good position, and then drag him down right into the trap. The graphics in Ghostbusters are awesome. Everything is really cute and the stages are completely different in design. Some of the bosses look fantastic and are epic in scale, like the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man and the giant Fire Head Boss of Level 3. The sound is equally good and the music is excellent. You don't ever hear any repeating tracks aside from the Ghostbusters theme between stages, and quite a few of the level themes have the tendency to get stuck in your head. Check out this awesome track from the Ice Stage. never played Ghostbusters on the Sega Genesis, I couldn't recommend it enough. It's a great game. The music and the graphics are awesome, and it, it really kind of feels more like a Ghostbusters game than the old NES Master System or any of those ports. It can be kind of difficult to find nowadays, and it's usually in pretty high demand. If you're not careful, you can end up paying way too much for it. I think that on average it goes between about $10 to $15 if you're lucky. I would definitely recommend Ghostbusters on the Sega Genesis to anyone who's a fan of the Ghostbusters or anyone who's a fan of a really good action side-scrolling platformer. 
it really is a good game. It's It's got great music, great graphics, it controls really well, and it's genuinely fun to play. If you've never played Ghostbusters on the Sega Genesis, I highly recommend that you go out and find yourself a copy. As always, guys, thanks for watching and subscribing. Until next time, stay classic.